dark frames, flat frames, flat dark frames, bias frames. These are all terms that you will have heard of when it comes to improving your final astrophotography image. In this video, I'm going to explain what each of these calibration frames does and how to take them. Hi everybody, I'm Nick and welcome back to my channel, Astro Exploring. Really quickly before we get started, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit subscribe and click the bell notifications so that you never miss another upload. Today we're talking calibration frames. In astrophotography, when you're taking a really long exposure of sort of two minutes and plus, you're creating a lot of noise while you're capturing the light from your uh, deep sky object. Calibration frames are all about improving our signal to noise ratio. There are different types of noise when you're capturing your light frames and each calibration frame will reduce a, a different type of noise in your light frame. When you're taking a long exposure, your camera sensor is going to start heating up, which creates thermal noise. Your camera will then start reading that thermal noise as light, and it will add all of that noise into your picture. To get around that, we take dark frames. A dark frame is basically just a pure noise frame. What we want to do when taking a dark frame is isolate the thermal noise that was created when taking our light images so that Deep Sky Stacker or your stacking software of choice can remove the thermal noise from your light images to create a cleaner final image. Taking dark frames is quite a simple process. You want to start by putting the cap back on your camera lens or telescope. You also want to cover the viewfinder of your camera so that no reflected light can make, um, make it back to the sensor. Now dark frames can be taken before or after an imaging session or during it if the clouds have rolled in but you expect them to clear a little bit later. The settings that you'll want to use for your camera, you want to use the same ISO that you're using for your lights, you want the same exposure length that you're doing for your lights and it's important that these are taken during your imaging session because you'll need the camera to be the same temperature that it is for your light frames and that is important. Um, unless you're using a, a cooled CCD camera, in which case you can take your darks whenever you want. And you'll want to take about 20 of these to create a good master dark file. And there is an argument to say that darks aren't actually important if you're using a DSLR camera. Have a play around with it. I find that I don't actually need dark frames for my camera. I find that the banding that I get across my um, light images is increased by um, adding dark frames to my file. So. If you're new to the hobby, have a play around, it's good practice to take dark frames, but um, you may find that you don't need them, which is great because they are really time consuming if you're taking long exposures. Flat frames will reduce the vignetting on your final image and it will also account for the uneven field illumination that's caused by dust spots and smudges. Flat frames are the calibration frames that beginners tend to skip because they are the hardest to take, but once you've got the process nailed down, they're, they're really not that difficult. So I do encourage you to take them. I find that these are the most important of the calibration frames that we take for my specific camera. There are a couple of different ways that you can take flat frames. I prefer the white t-shirt method because it's uh, low tech and quite easy. That is just putting a white t-shirt across the aperture of your telescope or camera lens and you want to you want to make sure that it's stretched out really tight and then uh, tie an elastic band around it so that it keeps it stretched and really tight. I then point that to the sort of early morning or, or early evening sky when it's not quite so bright um, to have a nice even field of illumination and then start taking my images. The other ways that you can take flat frames, you could do this in the dark after your imaging session. You'll see that some people use a light panel or they will use, uh, for example, an, an iPad screen or something like that. As long as you've got a screen that's big enough to cover the whole aperture of your telescope, that is the most important thing because the even illumination is absolutely key across the entire aperture of your telescope. The camera settings that you'll want to be using for your flat frames, you can turn your camera to, on a Canon, it's AV mode, uh, aperture priority mode, and allow the camera to actually choose the exposure time for you. I set it to aperture priority mode because there is no fixed exposure length for a flat frame. So for example, if I am shooting at ISO 1600, I find that it's generally about 1 250th of a second for a good flat frame. Importantly, while you're taking your flat frames, if you want to know whether you've got a good flat frame or not, you make sure you use the histogram on your camera. It's really important. If your um, data is all the way over to the right on the histogram and, and it's even clipping the right hand edge, 
and that is a, an, a clear sign that you are overexposing your images either by taking an image that's too long in exposure time or that your um, source of light is too bright for your image. So you can get over that by either pointing to a, a sort of different point of the sky that isn't quite as bright or you could add another t-shirt on top of your telescope if that is the method that you're using. You're looking for your data to be about one third in from the left on your histogram. Any further over than that and you're probably uh, too overexposed. But have a, have a play around with it. Like I say, once you've got the process nailed down you'll find that these are actually quite easy to take. Again, this is using the same ISO setting that you used for your lights and darks. And you want to, this is really important, you want to make sure that you're maintaining the same focus that you used for your light frames. Temperature isn't important for flat frames, so you don't have to take these at the same uh, time as your imaging session. You can choose to do them the next morning. I generally do them the next morning because I find that that's just easier. Um, unless you're using a cooled CCD camera when temperature is important. Flat darks are probably the easiest of the calibration frames to talk about, but they're also probably the least used or least known about calibration frame. Um, if you Google it, you'll find that there isn't a whole deal of information out there on flat dark frames, um, but essentially they are there to remove the noise that was added when you take your flat frames. So essentially to take a flat dark frame, you want to leave everything the same as you did when you're taking your flat frames, except now that you now you want to remove your t-shirt or light box or however you were taking them, and you want to put the dust cap back on your camera lens or your telescope. And for, for flats and flat darks, I find anywhere between 20 and 30 is fine. Um, but if, if you're using flat darks, take the same amount as, as the flats because then you're accounting for all the amount of noise that was in your flats as well. And importantly, if you take flat dark frames, you don't need to take the next calibration frame that we're going to talk about, which is bias frames. Now bias frames or offset frames as they're also known, removes the read noise that's generated by the camera as it reads a pixel as it's hitting the sensor. So when your camera is reading the data that is hitting its sensor, it will generate a small amount of noise and add that to the pixel as it saves it. Um, in order to remove that noise from your light frame, we take bias frames. Now bias frames are really easy to take and they only take a couple of minutes, which is great. And you can also reuse them for a, quite a long time because the pattern that's generated by your camera reading pixels generally doesn't change for, for quite a few months so you can probably reuse these for between four to six months at a time I would suggest. Depends how often you're able to do astrophotography. It's been a really terrible winter here in the UK and I've only managed to get out a few times so I'll probably leave it a little bit longer before I take bias frames again. To take a bias frame you can either take your camera off your telescope or leave it attached. It's entirely up to you. It's not essential that it's attached to the telescope. You want to make sure that the lens or telescope is covered if you are leaving it on, otherwise make sure you screw the, um, the sort of default cap that comes with the camera back on. As always, you want to use the same ISO as you used for your light frames, and you want to set your exposure time to the fastest possible time that your camera can do. My 650D can do 1 4,000th of a second, and I will take 50 of those to create a good master bias image. And just like flat frames, um, bias frames aren't reliant upon temperature, so you don't have to take these during uh, your imaging session. You can take these at any time. And like I said, you can reuse these for uh, many months, so there's absolutely no excuse for not taking these ones. And as I said with flat darks, if you're taking bias frames, you don't need to take flat dark frames and vice versa. What I'll do now is I'll jump onto my laptop and I'll show you uh, two example images. One is going to be of an image that's had all the calibration frames added to it so that the, all the noise has been removed from the image and then processed in Photoshop. And I will show you another image where it's had no calibration frames, it's just the light frames that are then stacked and run through Photoshop again so that you can see the difference between the two and why calibration frames are so important for astrophotography. Okay, so here's an image that I took of the Orion Nebula back in February. This was about an hour's worth of data, um, which is why the detail on this isn't, um, isn't amazing, but you know, it's okay. Um, but what I really wanna highlight here is just how smooth the whole background is there's no banding across it there's no vignetting you can see that it's a pretty even and flat field 
And what I want to do now is to show you this same image run through the same workflow in Photoshop, but without any of the calibration frames. And you can see just how much of a difference those calibration frames have made to the exact same picture. So you can see here, you can almost see it coming around in a circle here, but you've got this whole portion of the image here that is completely um, unevenly illuminated and that makes stretching this image really difficult. So what I've tried to do to highlight this is I've stretched it the same amount as the other image, which has obviously made the um, background worse, if you like. However, I just wanted to do a like for like comparison so that you're looking at the exact same image as, as per previous. If I just put these two images side by side, you can just see the difference there between the two. And of course, when you've got a nice flat field, you can actually see the, the detail in Orion much better than you can on this image because it's just getting washed out with all of this red uh, background back here. And that is why calibration frames are so important. So if I haven't sold it to you by this comparison, then you'll never be sold on the idea. And I do have another video where I take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to actually stack your images in Deep Sky Stacker using all of the calibration frames. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below, so make sure that you check that out if you're new to this process. I've also got a website where I've started to type up uh, tutorials of how to take each of the calibration frames. You can check that out at astroexploring.com. The tutorial for dark frames, I believe, is finished. I'm in the process of writing them for flats and bias, and I'll have those up in due course, so make sure that you Go to my website and check that out. I'm Nick, and this has been Astro Exploring. Thanks for watching.